All right, let's go ahead and do the even problems for 9-1's homework. All right, problem 30, a sub n equals n times n squared minus 6. Write the first five terms of the sequence. So we're going to plug in 1 for n, 1 times 1 squared minus 6 is equal to 1 times 1 squared is still 1 minus 6 is negative 5 and that's going to be equal to negative 5 and so we'll do the same thing for plugging in 2, 3, 4, and 5 so we'll plug in 2 we'll plug in 3 minus we'll plug in 4 and we'll plug in 5. 5 squared minus 6. So let's see what we got here. 2 times 4 minus 6 is negative 2, so negative 4. 3 times 9 minus 6 is 3, which is 9. 4 times 16 minus 6 is 10. So we've got 40. And then finally, we've got 5 times 25 minus 6 is 19. 19 times 5 is 95. First five terms of that sequence. All right, let's go ahead and jump to 40. We'll use a graphing utility to graph the first 10 terms here. So we can use our table to get that done for us. Let me jump over to the graphing calculator. Move this down so we can see our formula. So y equals 8 times... 0.75 to the n minus 1. And I'm going to make sure to put it in parentheses. We'll use x here for a variable, but n, same thing, it's a variable. And so now we have it. We can go ahead and graph it. Let me make sure I haven't used this in a, uh, this particular, particular calculator in a while. Let me check on the window, make sure we're good. Negative 10 to 10, that looks good. So if we go ahead and graph it, it'll look like that descending. And if I wanted to know the particular terms, I could go use the table. So let's look at our table set. We want to start at 1 and then count by 1. It's already set at 1 there. And we'll jump over to our table. And if we start here, the first term is going to be 8. The second term is 6, then 4.5. And you can see as we go down. So those would be our uh, particular numbers in our sequence and the graph again would look like this here. Alright, let's move on then to problem 50. Uh, write an expression for the apparent nth term of the sequence. So let's come up with an equation on 50. We can make a t-table like this using n the first five terms. And a sub n it would be our bottom of our table. 2, negative 4, 6, negative 8, and 10. So the first thing I'm going to look at is, can I figure out how to do this equation not looking at the negatives? Because the negatives will come later since they're alternating, positive to negative, negative to positive. So how do I go from 1 to 2, from 2 to 4, from 3 to 6? Well, this is simply taking n and times it by 2. 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, and so on. So without factoring in the negatives, my formula would be 2n. So how do I deal with the negatives? If we think back, we use the negative 1 to the n, and if we did that, our first term would be negative and then positive, and then negative and then positive. We don't want that. We need to offset this by 1, so we're going to use to the n minus and so that would be our formula. Let's take a look at 60. 60, if we rewrote this, we could say this is 3 over 1, then 3 over 2. 1 is the same as 3 over 3. 3 over 4, 3 over 5, and then it keeps going. So our formula here for 60, we could say a sub n equals we look in the numerator, it's always 3. 3 is staying the same, so we'll put 3 in the numerator. The denominator for the first term is 1. For the second term is 2. So that's just going to be 
10. Whatever number in the list we are, put that number in. So that's our answer for 60. Let's jump to 70. All right, write the first five terms of this recursively defined sequence. So A1 is already told to us. Let's go ahead and find the second term. So to find the second term, we need to use the last term that we already came up with. So this will be negative 2 times what was the last number that in our list that we came up with? 14. So our answer is negative 28. If we go to the third number on our list, we're going to say negative 2 times what was the last answer that we got? Negative 28. So our new answer is 56. We're going to keep doing that for the next two terms. Negative 2 times what did we get from our last term? 56 times that by 2, we get a negative 112. And for our fifth term, we'll say negative 2 times whatever we got last, negative 112, and come up with positive 224. Jumping to 80, let's do some factorial canceling. All right, I'm going to match up first 10 over the 6. Let's just look at those parts first. That's going to be 10 times 9 times 8 times 7. And I'm going to stop right there because once we hit 6, we're going to cancel out. 6 would be on the bottom. And secondly, I'm going to match up the 3 with the 4. Okay to rearrange these. I'm just going to have a 4 on the bottom because 1, 2s, and 3s would all cancel in my factorial. I'm going to cancel one more time here. 8 divided by 4 is 2. Makes this a little bit easier to multiply. So now we've got 9 times 7 is 63, times 10 is 630, times 2 is 1260. For our answer. Go ahead and look at 90. Uh, let's find the sum here. So, what 90 is saying is we're going to have 3 times, let's start by plugging in 0, 0 squared, plus 3 times. 1 squared. We're going to keep adding in new numbers, counting by 1, until we hit 5, the number on top, the upper limit of our summation. 5's up there, so we're going to keep going. 3 to the times 5 squared. Once we hit that, we'll stop. Alright, let's clean all these up. 0 plus 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times 4 is 12, 3 times 9 is 27, 3 times 16 is 48, and 3 times 25 is 75, and so let's go ahead and add all these up, 3, 15, 42, 90, 165 is our answer. Now we certainly could do this with the graphing calculator as well. Let's make sure we know how to do that. I flip back over to the graphing calculator view. And I'm going to go in here, y equals. And our formula part here was 3i squared. I'm just going to use 3x squared. The formula. And then I'm going to hit math summation, which is down the list. Oh, this one does not have the summation fat put into it. On yours, your calculator probably does. In the math list here, you can find the summation option right in here. And so if you plug that in, you'll be able to use your calculator to get your answer instead of having to do it by hand. We'll go over more of that in class. Make sure to remind me to go over that. All right, let's jump to 100. Use the calculator to find the sum. Let me just pause this a second and see if I can set up this calculator so it can do it.
All right, so we want to sum up this sequence here. So on our calculator, let me jump over to that. On the newer ones, most of yours will have the option to go straight into the math button and find the summation option. And from there, you're just filling it in so it looks like that. If you don't have that, you can still do it. What you're going to do is hit second stat to get to the list and go over here to math. We're going to come up to sum. We're going to find the sum of a sequence. So we have to go back into the list. This time it's in OPS sequence. And so here what we're going to do is we're going to plug in our formula first. And if I take you over here, if you Google this, you can take a look here. It's formula variable starting number. Okay. And then also you're going to use your uh, last number. This is a, a infinite sequence here. So let me jump back over here and finish this. All right, so here it is entered all the way in. We're doing the sum of a sequence. Here's our formula, negative 1 to the x. We use x on the calculator as opposed to k here. Divided by x factorial. If you want to get to the factorial, you're just going to hit math. PRB for probability, and it's right there, number 4. I'm just going to exit out of that. Comma, we plug in what variable are we using? K on the pro in the book, but we're using x here because we just did our variable button. Where is our start number? Zero. Where is our end number? Four. Careful with your parentheses, hit enter, and you get the answer, 0.375. All right. So make sure we know how to do this on our calculator because it's going to save you a ton of time when you do these problems. So if you're still not sure, make sure to go over this with me when you come into class. All right, let's jump to 110. Let's use sigma notation to write out what's going on here. So we've got sigma. And let's use k. Any variable will work. And what is going on here? All right, so it's definitely 1 over. That's always on the top. And let's decide to start with 1. So if we start with 1, then on the bottom we've got k times, it looks like k plus 2. So if I plug in 1, it's 1 times 3. If I plug in 2, it's 2 times 4, which is what's going on. And then the only thing left to do is how far is this going to go? The last one I want to plug in is 10. So that we could have 10 times 10 plus 2, which is 12. And that's it. That's all you would need to do to write 110 out. All right, last one to go over, 120. Let's find the sum of this infinite series here. And let me jump back over to our calculator. And so let's do this again. We're going to find the sum, which is in math of the sequence, which if I go to list is in OPS. Now remember, if you have the newer calculators, you can hit math, go right down to uh, summation, which will make it faster. But if not, we're going to go in here. Parentheses for our formula, 2 times, I'm just going to plug in 0.1 instead of 1 tenth to the x, i in this case in the book. All right, so that's my formula. Comma, what's our variable? x, comma, we're starting at 1. End it because it's infinite, so no ending number. And let's count our open, uh, open parentheses. 1, 2, 3. Let's count our closing. 1, 2, so we need one more. We hit enter, and what was the problem here? One, two, three, and one, two. And let me pause it real quick to see if there's a problem with the setup, but that should be how we do it. One second. All right, so just to finish up here, on this older edition, you can't put infinity in here, so we just need to use large numbers. And in this case, 100 is actually large enough, 100 different sums we we'll get us point two 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 twos repeating as our final answer. So that'll do it. Fairly short session on your homework tonight. Questions? Ask me in class tomorrow.